Hello, babies. <laughs> like a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, what's up? We are here in K-Town, Los Angeles. I'm about to train with Chef Key. This guy's trained at some of the best Korean fine dining restaurants in the country. We're going to make the most inspired taco I think I will ever have, which involves kimchi jjigae, pork belly, and seaweed. Doesn't that sound incredible? Let's go find out. Today we'll be making our uh, kimchi taco. Wow. Uh, this is actually a dish that's in, uh, in R&D right now. Okay, so cool. Super, we get the exclusive. Yeah, we're super excited to uh, test it out with you. We're gonna start off by cooking our rice. So we're starting with just washed rice here. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And this is a uh, dashi. So the point of this dish, even though it doesn't look like it, we're gonna make it taste like, you know, our grandma made it. Mm. So braised pork is a very popular method in Korean cuisine. Mm. Uh, we braise it until it's super tender, and then usually it's eaten with, uh, with kimchi and rice. So this is why I chose pork belly to mimic that flavor. We're gonna braise the pork and also use the pork for the kimchi sauce. Okay. So it's gonna be a, it's a double pork dish. Yes. This is our pork braising mix. You wanna take a smell and guess what's inside? Honestly, by the looks of it, without smelling it, it looks like cocoa powder, uh -huh. but I could be wrong. And it is cocoa powder, 100%. <laughs> yeah. yep. And bay leaf, mm -hmm. black pepper, and right? that's it. Okay, <laughs> great. Yeah. Yes. The reasoning behind this is that our grandmas use uh, instant coffee mix to braise a pork belly, Dude, right? literally, yes. Oh my gosh, this yeah. is exciting, actually. So I was like, oh, like, what can I use without stealing my grandma's jam, you know? And then uh, we came to R&D and found out cocoa powder worked really good. So mm. that's how we got to this. So essentially, the cocoa powder is offsetting that sort of like really upfront flavor of the pork. Right. Interesting. I'm gonna put this in. Okay. Put the whole thing inside. It's so funny. My mom, my, she would use Coca Cola actually. Oh, honestly, really? too. Yeah. Wow, it's, it's so random. Nice. I yeah. know. I'm gonna put some salt in here. And then it's the garlic. And then while this is happening, we're gonna make our kimchi sauce. Awesome. This is minced garlic. Sugar, homemade kimchi, sweet onion, and fish sauce. I'm gonna start off by uh, cutting some pork belly. This is gonna become a sauce, and everything's gonna get blended eventually. The size of the cut isn't too important, but we want everything to be cooked uh, at the end of the day at the same time. I would say maybe about this thick. We actually use a separate stock for this kimchi jjigae. We're okay. gonna use uh, anchovy stock. Oh, wow. Which is the fundamental stock oh, of wow. Korean cuisine. We're gonna slice up some kimchi. This has been purposely over-fermented. Mm. You can see how translucent this is. Yes, Yeah. Down. They're the perfect type of kimchi for kimchi jjigae. Mm. So how long has this been fermented, roughly? Uh, this has been about Three weeks. Okay, and obviously you make this in-house. Uh, we bought this from the store. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course we did. So we're just gonna slice it very roughly. So we're gonna use everything because kimchi is so valuable. Mm. It takes so long to make. We're gonna put some kimchi juice in here. Yum. Very important. So we're gonna top this off with anchovy stock, and then we're gonna put some minced garlic in here. So everything up until this point is fairly traditional. Exactly. Now we're gonna take this back and yes. uh, boil it up. So what is your general like R&D process like? A lot of my ideas start from shopping in Korean grocery stores. Mm. When I look at something in the Korean grocery store, it just reminds me of something you know my grandma did or my mom did when I was growing up. Mm. And then I just dig through my memory of yes. like what it tasted like yes. and how they made it. Yes. And then I would try to apply the techniques that I learned in my career and then apply it to my nostalgia. Sometimes uh, we hit it on the first time, totally. right? you're like, oh my God, I'm so good at cooking. Right? To totally, yeah. totally. And sometimes you like make, you know, something really <laughs> shitty. You're totally, like, what was I thinking, 100%, you know? yeah. yeah. So this is a rice paste made from sweet rice flour and water, salt, sugar. Wow. I'm gonna lightly brush it onto the silk pad. So the first step is to to do a jig. <laughs> Excellent, that makes the food always taste better, right? Oh. <laughs> Why do we use rice paste? So this technique is uh, actually very traditional. Mm. This is a very ancient Korean technique oh, of wow. uh, making this chip called puga that's made with uh, rice paste. Not so popular anymore, but um, it's like a very elegant and like high-end technique of wow. Korean cuisine. And we're gonna put 
a layer of seaweed. So there's two sides of seaweed. There's yes. the shiny side and the rough side. Yes. We're gonna put the rough side up. And what kind of seaweed paper are we using today? So these are called uh, sengin. Mm. The literal translation is uh, raw seaweed. And oh. obviously it's processed, but it's just ha it hasn't been toasted yet. Mm. Wow, it smells so oceany. Mm -hmm. We're gonna apply another layer of uh, rice paste. This is the final layer of the rice paste. And then we want to push it out like this so it'll stay um, flat while okay. it's dehydrated. Mm. You want to try one? Please. And so it should be fairly thin, the, the layer? Mm -hmm. If the layer is too thick, when we cook the chips, yes. it'll, you'll see the trace of rice paste. Mm. It'll just turn white and won't be so pretty. That's like so perfect. Excellent. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Any differences stand out that you've noticed? K-Town New York, K-Town LA? K-Town in LA is bigger than one block. Yes. That's for sure. Also, a lot of the businesses that are in K-Town LA have been here for decades. Mm. All right, and we're gonna let this dry for a day. So this is uh, what it looks like after 24 hours. Okay, this is the, we are 24 is hours the in the side. future. This is the rough side. Excellent. And then this is the mold that we're gonna use um, to make taco shell, so we're gonna... Is this a deli cup top? Uh, oh yeah. Oh, I love oh, it! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna cut the taco shells into this size. Okay. And these shells are as valuable as yes. the kimchi yes. because it takes forever to yes. make. And this is what we're gonna get. You wanna try one? Love to. We actually opened the restaurant with the a la carte menu okay. um, in the beginning. I think it was our customers that wanted us to do a tasting menu. Wow. Um, they wanted more guidance. All right, welcome to the table Party. here. Yeah. What are we playing? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> so now we're gonna fry the seaweed. Uh, we're gonna put it in and then flip it. Then we're gonna take Wait it a minute, out. Wait a minute, chef. How did you even get to that stage? Was it like a trial and error approach to that and figuring that out? Bugag again is a very traditional method and uh, there's a record of our ancestors doing this, this for hundreds of years. Thank God I had a guideline. Uh, so essentially we have dehydrated the rice paste and yes. we want to puff it up again. We tried just frying it on one side and triple frying it, uh, but it turns out that uh, when we triple fry it, it becomes really dense. Yes. And when we just fry it on one side, it gets soggy in the center. Wow. So that's a sweet spot that we found okay. along the way. So we fry it on one side and then we fry the other side and then we shape it with the taco shaper. This will be really fast. Put it in, it'll bubble up. Yep. The other side, take it out. It doesn't have to be in the center perfectly on the first time because uh, it's still a little flexible after it comes out of the fryer. Something like this. Yes. May I? Uh, if we can get it more even, that's better. On either side? Yeah. I'm ready. Here we go. Oh la la. Pretty good, pretty good. A little dark? Yeah. Honestly though, there's like a little special spot in my heart. I know like a nice, soft, delicious corn tortilla shell is the way to go for a street taco, but right. my mom growing up, she would make hard shell tacos. Uh -huh. And my first job, believe it or not, was at a Taco Bell. No so these are giving me like Taco Bell vibes. It's funny because uh, we actually wanted this to look like a Taco Bell taco. Is that right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So the shells are ready. And now the kimchi jjigae is also ready. If I garnished it with some, you know, scallion sure. on top, green onion on top, sure. you know, this would be a kimchi jjigae mm. ready to go. So our grandmas would stop here, but we're gonna keep going until it reduces and become a really fortified sauce. Mm. We made this in like 30 minutes, mm. but really, like in mm -hmm. real time, it's like three, three week or a month process. Exactly. So. Now we're gonna blend this uh, reduced kimchi jjigae into a puree. And boom, mm. there's our kimchi jjigae sauce. I love that the pork and the nat the cabbage are the thickeners. We're not using anything to thicken this other mm -hmm. than the natural ingredients that are in kimchi jjigae. Exactly. It's like a kimchi jjigae smoothie almost. Mm, that's what I want for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's almost ready now. So now we're gonna pull the pork. We have our braised cocoa pork. It looks pretty uh, intimidating because it's so dark. There's it looks a lot delicious, of chef. chocolate. But it's not really the predominant flavor is the cocoa, right? You'll get like a hint yes. of like a... Je like ne sais a, quoi. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Wow, you can see how the gelatin is really broken down. Yeah. Let's give this a try. Okay. Mmm. Wow, it just melts in my mouth. 
Honestly, there's, I'm not getting a lot of chocolate flavor. There's a little bitterness of the chocolate. It's a pleasant bitterness that's right. like playing very well with the richness of the pork. Now we're gonna put this into the fridge and then uh, chill it down. And once it's chilled, we're gonna cut this into uh, smaller pieces. Mm. It doesn't really have to be a perfect uh, size. Yes. Because it'll get folded into the rice. So all these components coming together for this one delicious, like miraculous bite. Right. Gotta love it. Yeah, usually uh, when we put lots of labor and love into uh, one bite dish, mm. you know, it usually works out. Mm. So. Well, we're gonna cut some uh, sangchu. So sangchu is uh, the most common wrapping vegetable in mm. Korea. So we're gonna separate these into stems and uh, leaves. And then the stems, we're gonna use it for oh the gosh. taco fillings. And the leaves, we're gonna use it for a garnish. So how did you come about this part of the process and your R&D sort of development? We wanted it to look like a Taco Bell taco mm. like we discussed earlier. Fun. So we started only using uh, leaves on top as a garnish. And then when we did that, there was no flavor of lettuce. This is gonna give you flavor. It's gonna give you mouthfeel, texture. Uh -huh. Alrighty. Now everything for the taco is ready. The rice is ready, our sauce is ready, pork is ready, and the garnish is ready. Drum roll! So it's time to assemble everything Excellent. together. So we take our cooked rice, every grain, so mm -hmm. beautiful. Put some kimchi puree, some salt, lettuce stems, and we're just gonna fold this. It smells incredible. A little more salt. I'm gonna put some to the piping bag. Wow. This is for the convenience and for efficient pickup mm. for the service. Cut the bottom, fill up the taco shell with the rice. Steamed pork belly that we just cut earlier. It will be generous and we can only fit so many in here so there's no point in saving. This is amazing. Where you would almost see like carnitas, we have braised pork belly. A little bit of sous vide egg yolk for the glue for the lettuces. And this is our kimchi taco. I'm just like dissecting this in my brain. It's super complex, but like it makes so much sense. With Korea and a shape of belly. Yeah, totally. Chin chin. Cheers. <laughs> Here we go. Mm, it's giving taco for sure. So many layers of flavor, super progressive, paying homage to tradition. Phenomenal chef. Thank you. Go team. Well, thanks for joining me on making this uh, long taco process. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait. To enjoy it on that side. <laughs> yeah, please come back. I will. Yeah. Absolutely.